Good evening, good evening, good evening. Had just a minor technical glitch for just a second, as always. There's always something seems to be going on. Um, we're going to go to eBay, and we're going to play around with some sales today. Um, that question's come up a lot lately with the end and sell similar and with what people do for sales, what works best, what doesn't work best, um, what should you be doing, what shouldn't you be doing. We're going to talk about all that. Uh, again, we're going to go over to my hub and we're going to actually do it live in just a few moments here. I have some discontinued items that I purchased and I've got the ability to purchase some more of these. So we're going to talk about that too at the end. Um, you'll probably see the green screen come off after we go over to the page here. Few updates. I think everything looks like I have sound. Everything should be running straight today. I don't see any other strange comments. Um, for Patreons, I have another video. It's set in there right now. As soon as this live show is done, it's going to upload, and it will be posted within about 30 minutes, so probably by 9.30 at the latest tonight, Eastern Standard Time, there should be another one up. While that's going on and uploading, I will be uh, answering anything else that's sitting out there. I did answer some emails prior for Patreons prior to this. Um, I am on the road. I have three pickups and a meeting tomorrow. So um, tomorrow might be a little hectic. I do have a vid video that was shot a few days ago that will probably be edited while I'm gone. And that should be up here for the regular one. Um, I do have two more Patreon videos, just FYI, already done that will need to be um, uploaded as well. So good evening to all. I know I did put the uh, announcement for this late. I'm always late on it. I know that's that's just the thing. I never know what's going on some days. Uh, I'm doing like, I don't know, 85 hours a week right now. Things are pretty pretty hectic on our end here. I know some folks may not be having as good of a result as they wish with sales. So again, we're going to pop into sales in just a minute here. Uh, Jody Hakala, good evening, good evening. Linda Wyatt, welcome. Hey, Charles, Mr. Lowe in the house. Stephen Holton, welcome, welcome. Craftomatic, that's a good name. Welcome as well. See the lights, how are you doing? Texas Lady, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, again, before we go any farther, I'm just going to hop over. I'm not going to be able to see chat very well because I don't have a secondary uh, feed coming in. Next time I'll think about doing that. I have another camera and pods and I could have done that. I just didn't even think about that until just now. Um, so we're going to go on over in just a second. Let me make sure I have everything opened up correctly. Uh, yeah, okay, so we're going to go over to my eBay store. I'm going to have to turn myself off here. You'll see a stutter for just a minute while we change. And we are, oops, that's not where I wanted to go. There we are. This is my eBay store. We are in the marketing tab. Marketing tab is where you're going to do all of the activity if you're doing markdown and sales. I have a sale running on probably 94% of everything in my store, almost 24 seven. Not the same sale though, it's constantly changing. Um, uh, heads up too, if it changes your sale and you're running a banner in your store, your store main page for the sale, you will constantly have to change that banner. Otherwise, your sale will never link from your store feed, your store, to any sale that's active. As soon as you end a sale or a sale ends in here in your marketing uh, markdown sales section here, it's done. Now, what you're looking up at the top here, all of this, I get this question a lot. These are sales that happened just from my actual sale. If it was purchased at the sale price, no offer, no nothing else, it shows up on this list. This list does not account for anything else that wasn't sold through a sale or that um, wasn't uh, an offer to a watcher. If somebody sends an offer in or something or I send an offer out to somebody, that's not a sale. That doesn't count the same as any of these here. So this is just what you're getting off the standard sale you run. About average, we get $1,000 to $1,400 every single month or so just from straight sales prices. The majority, though, of what we sell is sold through a offer to a watcher. Again, does not affect. you won't even see an offer to watcher on here. That's totally a different aspect of it. Before I restart a sale, I hammer out, and I've already done it, every offer to watcher I can do. It'll be a lesser percentage than what these sales start at. 
I've done it that way for years. It's just the way I do it. Um, at this point, I've already done end and sell similar about four days ago for 10,000 of my listings. 10,000 listings I did end and sell similar to. I sat down and spent an hour and 20 minutes and I did that. If eBay adds up and allows you to do a thousand listings that way at a time it would cut my time down in uh, eighty percent of my time would be saved I'd only be spending twenty percent of the time I was normally spending hopefully they'll do that I did send an email I did ask it would be a super super easy fix just to change quantity they did it with the editing on listings up to 500 even if they did 500 it would still cut my time down immensely so anyway this is the sales that I have running right this very second now, to start a sale, create a promotion, I'm going to go down to Sale, Event, and Markdown. I do this. Um, oh, actually, I don't really do this setup anymore at all right now. I've been copying. Let me back out. Let me, let's me let go over that first because I'm sure that's going to be a question in here. When these end, these are my sales I'm running right now. I've got sales on 27,310 items right now. Um, I sold one item, yeah, one item here for thirty-four thirty at the sale price. No quibble. It went on sale and they immediately got it at that sale price. That's what shows up on this list here. So uh, when these end, it won't say active, it will say ended. And then I would simply go here and I could copy it. And it will create a copy of that. So I've been running a copy of the sales we're going to set up in just a minute here for months months and months. You never have to do another thing once you set up what you want. Um, again, you don't want this automated because between the time these all end, I do sell similar quite a few times, end and sell similar. Never run end and sell similar when one end of the sales is going because I've seen other people have issues where when it sold similar, it sold similar at your discounted price. So I, I never ever do end and sell similar, nor do I suggest it if there's a sale running just fyi now if you've got your stuff hooked up to bonanza or any of the hit platforms or several other platforms now and you run a sale it changes the price for all your apis meaning that your sale on ebay is now a sale on any other site your your stuff's hooked up to just fyi i'm hooked up to stuff so my prices change on the other platforms as well that does prevent me from running site only exclusive sales like on hip or something they're running a, a big one here coming up here and they asked if i wanted to be part of it I, I don't really want to do that because i can't alter my prices with the way ebay does it because the again the api works a certain way so i know i may be rambling let me just hop over and make sure I can see feed for just a second here. Everything looks like it's going on fine. We're going to hop back over and we're going to create a promotion. The only promotions I use, the only ones I use, I do not do coupons anymore at all. We tried them. It just It's not, not something that works for me. I have to physically have the item on sale. A lot of people apparently just don't see the coupon option or don't realize it's there. We spent time in the past to send them out to people, and we never got much results out of it. We sent out hundreds of them, and I can only say that one, one single item sold out of hundreds that we manually had to send out back in the day. I know they've got it switched out. You can do groups and all that, but I gave up on coupons. When they stopped advertising for our stuff, they threw the coupons out there and basically pushed it for us to try and do it. It, it hasn't worked at all, not compared to what we had before. eBay used to advertise yours and my items. That's that's what they did. They spent money on, on lower, lower valued items. Sometimes they'd offer a coupon for stuff on your store, anybody's store, not just mine, but everybody's store. And they reimbursed uh, the seller. So the seller didn't lose anything, but the buyer got a discount. They don't do that. So I only use the sales event and markdown. And this is the exact page that comes up. Now, I'm running a 30% off now. It's summer. It keeps our sales running. If you're going to run a sale, an effective sale, something that's going to get your results, you can't just do 2% off, 5% off. Even 10 15% doesn't really draw a lot of people in based on what your, your list prices are. Now, if you list your stuff at the exact price that something would would sell at you've done all your comp searches everything a bunch of five people sold the exact same thing you have in your hand for 10 bucks that's the results on terapeak there's none active right now to judge on but you know five sold for 10 bucks well 
most people just assume let's list it for 10 bucks i'll get my money back boom it's off it goes i would come back in and say you know you have no playroom at all you don't know if they listed and sold those for 10 bucks because they saw others that did the exact same thing people seem to follow along with that they copy what other sellers do all the time People will watch an item just to see what happens, and they'll, then they'll follow your title and everything else. They see it all the time. No big deal. Who cares if they're doing it? It's not hurting you at all. But the point is, if I look at five sold items, and that's all that's sold for an entire year, Terrapicas for a year, I'm going to price them at $29 to $34.50 each. At one point of the year, I will be the only one with one up. And again, supply and demand, I can set the price a lot of these items, just because someone sold them for 10 bucks, could have been worth 30, 40, 50. If you don't mind waiting and you can play a long tail game, you can get a lot more and do a lot less work, but yet make more money than the folks quick turning stuff. There's a mathematical model to prove that based on sales. You know, so just FYI. Now, this is the sale version I'm running here. I'm keeping it the same. You can do offer free shipping for all discounted items. So I would run a discount and then domestic U.S. shipping would be free if you want to do that. I don't do that. I charge for shipping every time. In some cases, again, we're doing blanket items. I have no idea what's going to run on sale. I'm not worried about newly listed items at this point. We've built in buffers and all that stuff. I do a 3x for my pricing for most of my vintage items. Um, a 3x is basically three times the amount that you bottom end want to get for that item. You wouldn't take less than this for that item. That's the bottom end. That's a 3x structure. A lot of people do it. Uh, and that pretty much, if you follow the procedures, you follow the steps, you do discounts and stuff, you can still go 30% off and still come in at you know double what your expectation would be for the item. You'd get 2x for it, basically. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so I'm here. I'm going to keep it. This is just what I happened to use last time. So whatever you used last time usually is your already one filled in here, at least from what I, I've seen. I can add several different discount levels. I can pick and choose on the next screen, but I just do one flat one because then I can just copy it over. I know what's in each one. Um, and we're going to click on from here. We're just keeping 30%. I'm fine with that. That's all I recommend truthfully. If somebody asks, this is what I would recommend. This is literally what I tell people when they ask me step by step. This is it. Now, you can select 500 items per promotion specifically out of your inventory. Um, we'll include skipped items as they qualify. Items can be removed at any time. This one doesn't have as much um, increase interest i can't even say the word today uh, this one's not as um how would i put this um it doesn't have as many options i guess is the bottom end here so it, it's not as intricate as and that's the word i was trying to say intricate as um this other option so i use create rules using your categories this allows me to do up to ten thousand items per promotion and that's exactly what i do um, if you set it up right, you're not going to be discounting cheap items and all sorts of different things right there. So let's create this rule. We're going to do 10,000. You can do your entire store. You can do all inventory if you want. You can break it down by eBay categories only if you so wish. I personally use my um, individual... Hang on, let's see if it won't let me... Well, let me bop back and hang on. Let's just go there. Let's go back up now and change this. It should let me anyway. And it's not letting me do that. Um, let's let's back up here for just a second. It should allow you to choose. So let's go back in here. So let's pick store categories. I know what's in every category. Um, so that's what I'm going to pick on here, Foo. Is it acting up today? It almost looks like we are. There we go. It is acting up. Let me go back in here. Store category is selected. Uh, show all categories. So I'll have to just pick the ones I want. I'm sorry. So let's pick Victorian trade cards. Let's do sheet music. Let's pick, um, let's do records. Let's throw records in there too. So these are the categories I've picked. The minute you pick them, you get options up here to adjust what 
value in each one uh, you're going to run on sale. Now, I don't like to discount items that are under, say, $11.99. So $11.99 is going to be my bottom end. Anything under $11.99 won't be on sale. And I usually do $9,999.99. That's why it's there. If you use it a lot, that's the one you got. So then you have to click here, and it's going to filter out anything that's below the value of $11.99. So anything that's cheap that you don't want to discount, it's easy to do that that way as well. Now, um, there's another way. People say, well, I'd like to just do the oldest items on the site. If you're ending and selling similar, nothing basically in my store is much older than 30 days right now. We're going to end and sell similar some more tomorrow. So the, the last run, we, we don't do it every day. We do it like four times a month or so. We may up it just to give a test, but you can actually change this by the end date. So if you want to do 50 at a time and click them or whatever else, you want to select the specific ones, you can go back in and do that as well. You can adjust them by the, the date time they've been listed. Most of my items, again, are only like 30 days old. So it doesn't matter to me what's on sale or what isn't this time. Again, we've got 3X in there. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. Um, sheet music, sometimes I'll do $9.99. Some toys, sometimes $9.99. You, if you want to pick specific categories, I could have went back up there and just done a toy one. You have a, a, an option to title it. So I can come back in at the end, and we'll show you in a minute here. I could title it Toys. I'd put the date in the title, and I'd just be able to mark down Toys if that's all I wanted. So, again, you can do this any way you want. Uh, there's a million different options on this way. People I hear all the time, oh, I can't do this. I can't go by date. I can't go by this. You can come in here and pick them individually. You can highlight a whole sheet of them all at once if you want to, but uh, make sure I got that one on there. So that's everything here. It's uh, eliminated all the ones. So everything that's discounted right now, again, 30%, is above $11.99 and below basically ten grand. So we're going to save and move on. These are my rules. Now, I could add other filters in here. I could pick new items only. I only want to blow out some of the new items. Or I could eliminate the, the new items and only do used items. Or refurbished. Or manufactured or refurbished. These are other options you can do here as well. So if you just want to get rid of new items or you know NOS, you've got a bulk amount of inventory, you can just center in on there. I try to list everything. If it's new, it lists as new. If it's used, it lists as used. If it's manufactured, refurbished, or whatever. I bought a bunch of iPads or something. They're all refurbished from the manufacturer. I would list those that way, too. So let's just close this off here. So let's move on to the finalized screen here. So we've got all the... I'm just going to let it pick everything. I'm fine with the items that it has in there. Now, I don't include skipped or new items at all. That way, from this point going forward to the end of this sale, um, nothing that's newly listed is going to go immediately on sale. That's how you prevent that from happening. I don't know if you can do this from the phone. I have no clue. I know that question's probably up there. Now, what I also click then is the opposite button down here. Keep items in the sale and block revisions for price increases. So once they're in the sale, I can't go back in and mess with them at all which is fine. Again, I'm, I don't mess with much stuff other than when I'm doing end and sell somewhere. Then I'll adjust or do any kind of uh, adjustments to a title, maybe upload a better photo or something like that. When I start them, I start them immediately. Um, what will also happen, I've got other sales running right now. Since I have other sales running right now, um, it's only going to be able to pick items that are not in another sale. I lock each item into specific sales. The three sales that I showed you that I have running right now are um, in specific categories per sale. There's different values. There's some that do eliminate new items. There's some that eliminate used items and the whole works on there. So I start it now. I'm only doing them for two days right now. So Thursday to Saturday. In fact, I'm only going to do it till tomorrow because I am going to do end and sell similar. You have to do a sale for 24 hours bare bones minimum. 24 hours and one or two minutes gives you the, the, in fact, you can't do one or two minutes, but 15, 20 minute, what is it, a 30 minute increment. So you have to do it for that. Now, I always end them at 6 a.m. It probably will not allow me to. It's probably going to give me a warning because it's not 24 hours. Uh, in fact, why don't I just bop it down to like... Uh, 5 p.m. It should be safe there. Now, this is my sales event. So if I was just doing toys, I would just put toys. If I was just doing action figures, I could just type in action figures. This is just your title. No one can see this but you. 
So if you're running 20 different sales, you can easily tell which one's which. I always though, just in case, I always put 30% off and then whatever else you wanna do. So it's a 30% off on toys. It's not, but I'm gonna put a YT just so I know to remove this later on. Um, now there's a sales event name for it that everybody else will see. Um, uh, so we're just gonna put 30% off sale going Oops, going on now. And that's it. That way it's a generic one and it covers any category or any item. It's simple, it's sweet, it says what's going on. It shows up on my banner again. I'll, I've already got one saved on my banner in my store. But if you are just starting your first sale, you can add a sales banner onto your store. And it does look like at this point, if you have a sales banner on your store, each individual item, if you've got the new setup that eBay is running for your view pages, will now have a sales strip on the bottom if you run a sales banner in your store. So just FYI, I would always recommend doing that for that exact reason. Uh, it says it could take up to 12 hours for uh, this to start. Usually just within, say, 5 or 10 minutes, I've got them started. And you, you can know that because the value of your inventory will lower as the price goes down that 30%. I've got $1,160,000 in this store here of list price. It drops down on a 30% sale on the majority of my goods at the 900,000 mark to about 865, depending on exactly how many items I have on sale. So we're just gonna click the launch and it's gonna bring me back to this page and there it is. Now it's pending. It's gonna go through and scan through my items in whatever sequential order it uses and any item that's in a sale already, all these other items are going to be booted out. They will not be included in here. So this sale probably will only include a limited number, 20, 30, 40 items, who knows? Uh, in fact, if it's low, usually you can keep reloading it and it'll pop up. The minute it starts to bounce up with numbers, it's usually not much longer than that. If you run, if you want to run a couple sales, you have to wait. It doesn't say this. I've run it too many times to, to, to not know this, but you can't start a whole bunch of sales. So I wouldn't copy each one of these sales real quickly and just leave the room. When one sale is complete, then you've got to copy and start another one. If again, you want to just keep running the same sale over and over and over and over again. Why spend the time to set a sale up if you're just going to run the same one? And you only have to set up one version of it. Again, you can change or do whatever you want. There's my title. The rest of these are just my standard save up to 30%. If I run a special one, I put toys or whatever the case may be. You can see it right there. So again, it'll be a very limited number there. We're gonna pop back to the main screen and then talk about some other philosophies on this. Again, I'll probably turn off green screen in a few moments here just to discuss some um, other items here that I want to hit up on. Can you choose to discount just one type of item like men's ties, for instance? Yes, you can individually check, uh, select any items you want. So uh, you can use keywords in some, some instances as well too. So just FYI, um, that's literally all there is to setting up the basic sales. That's what I have already set up. You only have to do it one single time because you can just copy it. You copy them, again, I've been copying those same sales for, for months and months and months on end. I haven't touched them. I haven't had to alter them or anything else like that. I could just edit them. I don't, if you've got a live one going on now, you can edit it. You click the edit option instead of copy or end or whatever. You can edit it and remove one item if you want. Once before I had an item that I wasn't going to include on it and I accidentally had it in there. So I clicked edit. I got the item number and you can add it in where you subtract that item number from the current live auction. So you don't have to end an auction, or not an auction, end a, a sales and markdown just to remove an item. Uh, it, was, it was, I don't even remember what it was, but it was something I didn't want on sale. Um, I, I had some other deal going and I was waiting for somebody else to buy, and that's what it was. Somebody was buying some other items and I didn't want to run something that they were interested in on sale because I could have got it at a certain, we already had price worked out. That's what it was, that's what it was. So again, that's why I, in the beginning of that, said that I actually send out all offers to watchers ahead of time. Just FYI, when the, again, you can run a different sale. I could up it one week to 30%, down it to 
I personally, though, work with the perceived value. I, if you've watched my videos for any length of time, I've religiously talked about perceived value. I worked in a corporate America aspect. I was a regional manager. I, I handled, not to brag, but $11 million in sales was our, our yearly from the stores that I, I did. Um, that's the profit margin, but uh, it was 34 stores. I ran for Einstein Brothers as a regional. But anyway, I, I, I've, I've learned all the steps there is to this. Uh, the perceived value aspect works. When a new item rolls out in, in any place, a new uh, store, a restaurant, whatever it is, when a new item rolls out, they've, they've got a huge marketing team behind it. When like Applebee's introduces a new menu, they've ran through chefs, they've run through like groups, they might have even ran those menus in one single store and done tests or had people try them out. They'd have managers test them, they'd have testing facilities, taste them, and then they've got a marketing plan that goes with that and all that kind of stuff. Perceived value is a real thing. Millions of dollars have been spent in universities to study stuff like that. The reason prices on products and stores say 99 cents instead of say 9.99 instead of 10 bucks, ten dollars is is a bigger number. It, it's a perceived value that it's it's more. It's going to cost you more, even though it's the penny. It's that it's under ten bucks thing. And again, that's really a thing. That's really something like um, 19.99 versus 20 bucks, or 17.50 versus 18 dollars. Um, a sale works the same way. So if you're going to run a sale on 5% off, it's usually not much. It's usually not a, a huge draw. So I hear people say, hey, I ran a sale for 5% off and I didn't get much out of it. it. It's not a perceived value of enough discount to draw somebody in. Menards up here has a sale. I think it's like 11% off. I can get 11% off on a coupon somewhere else. Why would I worry about going through one of their things just to get 11% off and just like rebates and stuff. It's the same basic principle. I, I turn in the rebates, but a lot of people don't. And that's why they offer rebates because you lose the receipt, you forget about it, you don't send it in. There's always a percentage of people that don't turn in a rebate. That's why businesses do a rebate instead of just, hey, take this to the counter, here's a coupon, you can use it now and get your money back because they save money. They save money. That's why they sell like um, insurance plans ahead of time or you pay in advance because people will forget to cancel. And there's all kinds of reasons why yearly payments and all this stuff work better to them. If you're smart, you take advantage of that. I, I'd rather pay a year in advance for something to save 20%. Um, again, there, there's a, a million reasons why perceived value works. So if you're not going to do at least a decent amount of discount, you're not going to get great results. Again, I'm, I'm not running the sale to get a, a sale from that sale price. That's not my end goal when I run these sales, when I'm always running a sale. My end goal is to get people to watch the item so I can send an offer to that watcher. That's, that's the only reason I even run sales. It draws attention to the store, and then I can go in and check how many offers to watchers can I send out. That's the key. That's why I run the sales. I could care less about the, well, you know, I, I want the $1,000 whatever it runs with what's selling on sale price, just the sale price. But the offers to watchers are, are 10 to 1. If I'm doing $1,000 in you know, uh, sales uh, and markdown um, sales, I'm probably doing 10000 or more, bare bones minimum in just offer to watcher sales, not counting straight purchases or deals I work out or multi-item discounts and stuff. So again, I, if I'm doing a sale, it's usually 20% or higher off. If you, if you price your things right at what it's priced at and right what it should sell at, you can't do that. So that's why people end up doing 5%, 2%. What are all these crazy low prices? Single digits don't draw enough attention anymore at all these days for discounts. Um, I know a lot of people say if I, I run the sale, I'll get a lot of lowball offers and things like that. I, I've got enough playroom into my listed price to be able to play around with that and to be able to still make them... Uh, have a perceived value that they're getting an incredible uh, deal on it when they're they're you know even countering back usually the counter back though is still twice or maybe a little less than twice my my 1x factor on those items so I'm still making almost double what my my bottom hey I want this amount and that's my lowest offer when I do whatnot, I know I've had so many people to reach out and say well you need to start them at a dollar and all this I'm not going to take less than a price on something why would I sell something and, and take the risk? I don't risk on anything. If you watch my channel for any length of time, you know I'm very risk-free. 
why why would I list something and maybe it only sells? I've looked at two. I've looked at hundreds of what not ended auctions and, and sellers and looked at what they sold stuff for and looked at the dollar amount. And I, I, I again, I haven't had a what not recently because you know I do better on other platforms. I don't. And again, I don't want to just turn into it. Nothing wrong with what not. It's got its its issues like every other site does, but. The, the media rate is why it's killing me. I, I wanted to do records on it. But with the media being gone and the, the double instead of a dollar extra, it, it, it crushed it. Before I even got on, they changed the rules on me. So anyway, uh, let's see here. I know I haven't answered much questions in the chat or feed. I really want to touch on this. I, I get hundreds of questions. I get hundreds of questions every single day. I get hundreds of emails uh, on any given day sometimes these days. I can't answer 99% of them, so just FYI. I get hate mail a lot of times because I don't answer. But I, if, if you realized how much mail people get when they do this stuff, everybody wants help. And again, I'm not trying to trying to disparage anybody. I do answer occasionally. Patreons, I answer all the time. And again, I'm not trying to steer you to do that, but I always answer patrons. And I, I answer a lot of stuff on Patreon and, and stuff. I get tons of questions. Sometimes the kids will write them down if they see the same one all the time. They will go through the, the approved posts and stuff for me. I've talked about that before, too. But uh, So I, I get the same questions all the time, and we do try and keep track of them. I'm trying to cover every question that I can think of. I will uh, bounce back over to the chat before we go on to some discontinued items that I purchased today. I don't know if they're all over the place. I can't tell you. I might just have been lucky enough to run into a source for something I've never bought in my life. Um, they're high-end stuff. They're something that most women out there would probably like. Um, they're expensive imported soaps and stuff from England. Um, I was very happy to to um, find them anyway. For, for the price of just a small assortment of them, one or two will pay for them all. But anyway, that'll be in a little bit here. We'll show them. So hang on out here if you're interested. Back to sales. I try to, again, 20% is the lowest sale I usually do. If I'm, I'm swamped, I'm doing, you know... Twenty thousand dollars in a week, or some crazy amount. It's it's fourth quarter, and sales are just cranking them thousand dollar days, or whatever's going on. I might drop it down to ten or fifteen percent, or I might just not run a sale. I judge sales by what's going on in my store. If I'm in high demand and everybody's buying, and I'm selling multiple purchase items every day. Again, every day I I, I tried to track down because I had this question. This is a question I hear all the time. Pretty much every day of my life, somebody buys a multi-purchase, meaning they bought at least two items at the very same time going in one package. I, I can't think of a day that that hasn't happened. And I, I'm really, I really went back and we've, I've really been trying to pay attention because I've had quite a few people ask me that question. You only can do that if you're selling in niches mostly. Um, and you've got a lot of inventory and you sell to collectors mostly. And that's mostly what I do with the store I share. But so 20% or I turn them off in fourth quarter sometimes. Um, in summertime, I usually run 30%. I'm going to run a 50% um, off on some toys. Again, I have toys are in my mind. That's why I brought up toys earlier. But just to blow some out because I got some more in. Um, so I, I'm, they're not as hot. The, the value on some goes down. Older, older stuff that's over 100 years old, there's less and less collectors every year. So you've got to compensate for things like that. So just FYI. Um, sometimes when you've held on to something for a couple of years, there may be less people interested. So you should list certain items right away. And that's one of those lessons we've learned the hard way um, here and there. It's very rare, but we still get our money back. So I'm not going to sweat it. But um, let me think, what else sales-wise? Again, as I said, we run a sale 24-7. There's maybe an hour, hour and a half gap if I'm running and in sell similar. Um, you can adjust the time that they end. It doesn't have to be a full 24 hour or a full um, like two days or whatever. You can bounce it back and forth by a 30 minute increment. And that's exactly what I do. Um, if I'm always running into the issue where they're not ended and that's the free time I have to do it again in the morning, it's ending up with uh, packing up stuff from multiple sites and printing up you know master scan sheets for each site that we're, we're mailing stuff out of um, sometimes you know we may have to you know um, update a listing because again i hide quantity in my listing so sometimes i might have to spend 10 or 15 minutes to readjust uh, quantity on hidden quantity listings um, that's where i only list one at a time but in that listing i i have a uh, 
again, I've talked about this. There's an X in some of my titles. That X in the number usually means that I have more than one of them, but the quantity only says one at any given time. Um, and I do hide how many I have of everything, too. I've shown that option. There's an option in settings where no one will know the exact quantity of what you have up. That can create scarcity as well. Again, that's part of why I only list one of quantity. I do run sales on those items. If you're selling in niches like this, running sales are not too... Some of the items, if you buy in bulk and you get a whole bunch of them, you may only be able to sell a handful of them because there's only a handful of collectors that are still alive that may want it. So always keep that in mind, too. I always use that as a factor when I'm purchasing stuff, too, so that I'm not buying... Uh, too much of a quantity where I won't get any money out of the, them or I sink too much in thinking it's quantity. Sometimes with stuff like that, I only buy like a few of them, just enough where I figure I could sell them and let somebody else worry about trying to sell the rest of them. Why buy a hundred of something if I only think I have enough collectors to buy five of them? Don't overpay. And that's a reason why I see people sometimes they think bulk is great. You got to be careful with bulk. So just FYI on that one. Um, I mean, that's that's the basics for sales. If you follow that, they're going to be effective. They're, they're going to be effective. Again, what type of effect do I want out of running a sales like that? I've got 3x pricing, so I'm doing one, one third off basically at 30%. So I still have two thirds of my, my bottom end, you know, still with some playroom and stuff in there. Bottom end means that's what I would like to get out of the item. That's that's how much I think that it's worth, you know, and then I'll hold on from there. Usually I never go below that 1x mark. It'll set forever if that's what it is. Um, I almost always sell all the older stuff at some point. Maybe I've got a few here and there, and, and I don't mind something sitting for four or five years. Who cares? I mean, you're not paying anything extra for it. All the work's done. It's now passive income. So uh, don't, don't be afraid if you've got sales coming in. Oh, what am I going to do about these old items? Who cares if they sit there? You've got a broader reach on, on eBay if you, if you keep them out there. You've got more stuff spread out over a bigger area. Your fingers, your, the roots of your business are all over the place. The more stuff you have. And I do think that that plays with the, the logarithm in general, the sheer quantity uh, I really think that has a big factor, and, and we've, you know, again, we've grown our business, and we're still working on other aspects of it, other stores that we monitor and stuff like that. Um, let me just hold one of these up and see if it'll actually. I think it's going to be. Uh, let, let me let me do something I usually don't do, which is turn off my green screen here. So you'll have to wait just a second here. We're going to turn off green screen. I don't usually, as I said, do that, but. If you didn't know, I have a green screen on. So this is this is the green screen. We're going to go and just show these real quick here for just a minute here. Now it still has the prices. In fact, let's just let's just end it for today on the green screen. We'll just do it this way. Okay, so now we've got no green screen. We'll just be able to show you this quite easily here. Um, these are Crabtree and Evelyn. Or Evely, Evely, I guess is what they are. Now these are all NOS. They're all sealed. They have stickers on them. All of these. Now these are all NOS. Um, again, I've got a bunch of them. I mean, I've a bunch of them. Let's just say a bunch of them. I've got box kits and all. Um, I paid. Well, you can see what I paid. This one was five bucks. Now I looked up some of these. If you look these up. This sells for like, um, geez, I want to say like 30 bucks. Used, I can get 30 to 50 bucks a piece for these. Now, that's the price they have on them. I'm going to get a rebate at the end of the day here um, and get 10% back on these. Um, I save the receipts, and you can get credit for 10% of your receipt value uh, when you go back in certain times of the year. So. I do that. I've got coupons. I get punch cards. Anything you can save on stuff like that. Most people forget to save the receipts and, and uh, either that or don't bring them back in the, the time window that this this thrift store has. But So I'll have 50 cents a less than this. $4.50. I'm going to get 30 bucks. I got a lot of them. I mean, a, a lot of them. And these kits and stuff, these are like 24. These are perfect items for Christmas. I mean, they smell really nice, I have to say. Um, again, they all have the this factory seal still on them. Um, these here sell for around 24 bucks in season. Again, I'll get top dollar for them. I do believe they're discontinued items. There's no expiration date on the items as well either. So 
Um, they're safe to sell. They're approved. They're expensive. Um, and I'm going to get more of them. Discontinued items. I've talked about discontinued items on, geez, I don't know how many uh, different times. I've got, uh, I think, at least two videos on just discontinued items as well. It, it, there was a scrubbing bubbles type of it. In fact, maybe if I can remember, I'll I'll come back in after this this show's done. I'm not going to be on for a super long time because I'm on the road tomorrow, as I said. But um, I've got a video just on discontinued items. People get used to or love a specific type of soap or cleaner or something. And when the company discontinues them, the price on those can go like 10x, 100x even in some screwball uh, cases. Like when a soda company stops a soda production or run or something like that like when old coke and new coke and all that the, the prices on the stuff went through the roof it was i mean incredibly insane some of the pricing uh, and stuff like that and that's basically what these appear to be from from my my uh looks on them now another thing on I looked these up on my phone out before I ever, I walked away, I, there's, there's no cell service in, in the, the place where I was at, so I had to walk out after I, I made sure I wasn't going to spend four bucks or five bucks on something and found it it wasn't. From my phone, eBay showed sales history of some of these in the 30 to $50 range in completed listings. When I got home, I couldn't find them looking through my browser, through eBay itself from the web page, which was really puzzling that they showed up on my search through the phone versus you know online really really crazy i don't know what the deal is that's kind of troublesome just fyi that the search results from the web you know from a, a browser from a laptop pc were totally missing stuff that showed up on my phone so anyway i did end up finding them through some diligence but um it was kind of screwy on that but look up those items yourself you know you can look up the price on stuff like that now if i scan these with the barcode the folks who put the, some of the listings up, they won't show up. It depends. Some of these, they'll show up from your phone with a barcode, and they won't show up online. It was really screwy because I thought I was crazy when I got home and looked these up. I know for a fact that I scanned these. Now, some people, again, they're not going to put in the, the UPS. All they're going to put in is Crabtree and Evelyn here and then sweet almond soap, oil soap or whatever. They're not going to usually put the, the barcode. I see that so many times. Most people aren't going to find quantity. So, And these are sealed. I'm not going to open it. But there's three bars in each one of these. They're the deluxe set, discontinued. I got a stack of quite a few of each one of these. Um, there's probably about $500 worth of profit, bare bones minimum here. Profit after fees and list list price. That's our estimate on how many we have. Um, again, it, it's the right time of year to be looking out for stuff like that. I, I don't know where they came from. I don't know how they ended up or where I found them at, but I'm, I'm happy with that. I can't always determine where stuff shows up. If you go to... I'll give I'll give I'll give you a, a place to look for stuff like this to some extent. Scratch and dent auctions. Around here they have scratch and dent auctions, and what happens sometimes is you'll have boxes of products show up there. A pallet of this, a pallet of coffee, um, Keurig cups, or whatever whatever the heck. That stuff shows up at places like that. The closest one to us is about a 35 or 40 minute drive. And yes, I do go to there occasionally. I'm not going to give the town out or anything, but those are good places to find stuff like that. Discontinued items. Usually it's in a big old tin, tin building. Usually doesn't have air conditioning. Um, stuff like this, you got to be a little careful if it's been heated up and stuff. Make sure the soap isn't meltable. These look perfect. I opened one up just, I wanted to know. So I opened one up before I bought a whole bunch of them. I paid the money. I knew it was worth something. I figure if I opened it up, I could still sell the individual bars inside and still make a profit. You know. Anyway, you, you got to sometimes do that. If you buy a bunch of printer ink or printer cartridges and stuff and you don't have something to test them on and they're old and they've been heated up, what will happen is the, the, the cartridge will be clumpy. So it won't run or it won't give the person who bought it much use of it at, at all. And it could actually ruin their their printer. I know people sell them all the time and they, they don't worry about expiration dates and all that. And uh, we had a couple of ne uh, negatives from that a while, a long time ago now, but uh, so we stopped selling anything that wasn't a valid date, that wasn't um, more modern, that I couldn't at least have a, a good idea that um, they were held in a climate controlled environment. If they're setting out in a hot garage, chances are they're all clumpy. 
and they could ruin a printer and you don't want to have to deal with negative feedbacks and stuff so i don't sell printer cartridges nos even nos especially um if they're you know more than so old just fyi yeah, it's been slow. Uh, I know there's a lot of stuff going on. School is coming back in a session. College starts back up this week. So uh, let me shoot this out here. Cause there'll be this is I was going to adjust this, and it's actually shot in one of my Patreon videos. But um, this week and next week should be slow. Parents are going to be bringing kids in. This is the fall. This is when this is if you're entering a four-year college program or a two-year college program, the first the first time that they start is the fall. This session. So people are are leaving town to drive their kids to dorms and, and make sure they get moved in and all this stuff. The schools are packed. They've got, you know, special sections so they can move in and all this other stuff. Locally, they start on the, the 29th, I think, is the first day, I think, of college this year uh, here for the major universities. Um, it depends on the program, but that's mostly what it is. So as of this week and next week, probably a bunch of people, depending on what you sell, you may be slow. Just FYI, people, if you're if like college, like clothing and stuff like that, may be a little slow as well, too. You may have a little dip if you're a clothing seller and stuff like that. Homes good, home goods may be a little less of sales. FYI, so don't panic. This is a typical time. It's usually slow this time every year. You should always keep track of what's going on this year and keep a, a log from every day of the week or, or whatever the case may be so you know where your sales are falling. Track your sales on a sheet. You can, you know, cross-reference them for years in advance on the same sheet. You can see every time, this time of the year, give or take a week in either, either direction, it's slow because you should write down why. You should figure out why it's slow. You always, again, that's why I'm running 30% right now on the sales. I want to compensate for, again, I do them ahead of time because I know every year it's slow, so every year I should run a sale ahead of time. So I'm already bringing in a little extra coming in before the slowdown again it's gonna be a little bit may not affect everybody much at all it just depends on what you're selling it doesn't affect us much at all these days we've pretty much kicked to the road anything that was more seasonally oriented why why should i mess with stuff if there's going to be a dip and i'll have to change inventory and invest more time into moving stuff out um uh, my inventory comes from marketplace in bulk let me slide down here um, I don't know where we stand on the feed. The feed does look slow today. Good evening. Hey, Marty. Jiminy Flippin, another YouTuber as well. Uh, check him out if you get a chance. Who am I missing? Are you bizarre? Fabulous Flamingos, Mary Webb, uh, Liz Hernberger, Barbara Engro, um, Shane Westfall. Semper Fi, 1918, Marines, 1918, World War One. Joe Samard, how are you doing, Joe? Eileen C., uh, I think we're caught up. Linda Wyatt, Biff Bofo. Um, I, uh, I did respond to one of your posts on Cuba items. Don't list Cuba items on eBay. Unless it was printed here or it's a Cuba, the city here. There is one city or two cities named Cuba in this country, in the U.S. But don't list, there's still an embargo on Cuba items, and they're technically illegal. If the items were made in Cuba after the embargo date, eBay doesn't care, and they don't know how to tell the difference. I don't blame them, but somewhat. You can't list them. eBay pulls items that they know are from Cuba. Um, just FYI, it's it's they've done it for years. It's still on their banned items list. Uh, North Korean items you can't list. Iranian items for the most part you can't list. Not only can't you list them, you don't even want to have the word Iran, North Korea, um, or Cuba in any payments through PayPal at all. I put the word Iran once in a purchase I made. Uh, it was a personal one-to-one -one purchase on there. It wasn't even a marketplace or anything else. And they locked my account and wanted an explanation on what that meant, why I put Iran. And it, it was over buttons from Iran that the British government made. They were British made when the, the England actually uh, was in control of Iran. Whatever time frame that was, I don't know. But um, the, the point of it was they were all British made merchandise. It wasn't. It, it just happened to be that they were for um, Imperial Iranian. It, it wasn't even under the same. It was when there was a monarch. So anyway, long story short, you don't want to do stuff like that. So don't list things from Cuba. Uh, I thought at one point maybe they were going to just be done with the whole Cuba Cuba thing. But, you know, I think they should at this point. But anyway. 
let's see here. Yeah, hit the thumbs up if you're enjoying the conversation. Robert Charles Manson, good evening as well. Uh, let's see here. Can you choose to discount just one type of item? Yes, as we said. Long tail game develops only after robust short tail game. Yes. Um, when I started, when we first started reselling, well, let's go back just a, a little little bit here. The first foray into reselling, you could only do auctions. So we would run three batches of week-long auctions. They ended or started on Sunday and ended on Sunday in the evening. And that we did them, you know, three out three weeks, and then the the fourth week we would take a break because I worked full time as well. I was a regional or a GM at the time when we were doing that. So um, that would be our initial runs on that. Um, hang on a second here. So a, again, back to long term. Sorry, I saw something pop up. So as time went by. Obviously, eBay changed it with the 30-day, which I think I'm fine at this point, honestly. We get more money out of the items running them as a bin, a buy-it-now option versus um, a regular auction, like 95% of the time. That's for the average stuff. If you've got real rare items, chances are an auction is the best bet. Maybe on eBay or maybe Heritage or, or Sotheby's or, or Christie's or something, something one of those runs there. But um, overall, unless it's a real rare item, you usually do better as a bin and just price it high. You'll sell it for more almost all the time. The, the vast majority, you can even check that out on eBay specifically by looking at ended prices and stuff. You can compare, uh, and in fact, what we do sometimes is I'll do a split screen. So half the screen will just be a search. So I'll have two windows open, back to back, right next to each other. One screen's just going to have the bin prices. And I know you can look at them together, but it's so much easier to do highest to lowest. One screen will be bin prices, and one screen will be auction prices. And you can do the same thing and, and compare free shipping. And I know their shipping is, is glitchy. It's not always correct. So I do compare a few to make sure. But... Um, comparing those, you can get some more data out of it. They have improved data, and a lot of people maybe don't understand how to figure out things like prices and stuff. They just go strictly by what other people sold stuff for. I know that's great for some things, but rare and collectibles, it's not. You can get more money almost all the time if only a few sold every year, because you'll be the only one up every time in some cases. Uh, so long tail wise, it starts with short tail items. I needed money when we first started off just to quickly flip stuff to pay bills. It's, it's really hard to, to, to get into long tail until you've got enough quantity up. But I, I swear to you the best bet, if, if, you don't, if you can figure it out, if they're small items, if, if you don't get stressed out in the f first few years or two, inventory wise, there's hundreds of thousands of inventory pieces in this building. We have 400,000 plus individual items in multiple categories, millions of items. I've got I'm not going to go into numbers, but I'll just give you the, at least probably four or five million dollars in list price in inventory that's not even listed, just because it's bought in bulk and, and it's cheap, small stuff. Most people laugh when they see the type of stuff I buy, but they usually stop laughing when they see what we sell, how much of it we sell. Um, so, long tail is the best bet. Passive income. Once you have it up. Let, let, let's let's go back for a second. I know I ramble a little bit, but um, back in the day, what people would do, and there's there's a lot of people that haven't broke this habit, is they used to run an auction for a week. And with what doesn't sell, they'd relist them once. And if a bunch of the stuff after that point doesn't sell, they would just remove them from the site, donate them, wouldn't list them again. And people still do, the old timers still do that now on eBay, right this second right this second or they'll roll them out really cheap into a bin and just blow them out thinking there's no value there vintage items there may only be five people that want one specific item in the whole world in in existence there's only five people one may have it and get it from someone else so now there's four and those four people chances of them being online for a 14 day period if you're running two week-long auctions is very slim they may have been working for a week. They may not check every day. They may only check on the weekends. They may have been out of town. Those You, you, you have a very limited amount of people for most anything. For a $100,000 comic book, something that's a first appearance, um, Amazing Fantasy 15, Spider-Man, first app. There's only a small handful of people that can afford to buy that. So it doesn't matter if, if once you hit that mark of how many people that can afford to buy it, 
they're again that's that may be a bad example just because there's so many people that's the hot it's a hot comic but there's are some issues like uh, more fun comics five or something from the 40s golden age comic book there's going to be a very limited number of people that even know what more fun comics is so again you run into that just like before detective comics before Detective Comics 27, look at the look at the comic. There's 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 limited numbers of people that love that. I love there's a there's a uh, I want to say it's a Fu Manchu cover from Detectives before the first half of Batman, which I actually like. I love the the title, the artwork. It's Art Deco over the original Detective Comics. Anyway, I'm rambling again, but so there's only a limited number of people that want any specific thing. And if you only run them for a couple of times and assume since you only ran them since you ran them and no one wanted them but they're not worth anything, you're just giving stuff away. The the the, the short quick flip only works to a certain extent on some items. You're going to end up blowing them out and giving stuff away. Once you got them up, don't why take them down? You've got the work already invested into them. All, it, all growing your store, it's no big deal. I mean, to get 25,000 listings up, it still only costs you 60 bucks on eBay right now. If they don't sell, you're not paying a final value fee. Think about the exposure you get from having multiple multiple tens of thousands of items up. The exposure, the, the, the amount of views you can get. Somebody might find something by looking at one item just because you've got so much. And if you flood a category with your items, or at least dominate them, I shouldn't say flood, but if you dominate a category and have more items than everybody else, you have like 30% of all items in a specific category, every page you are seen on. So even if you're able, even if everybody sell, all the other sellers sell certain items for 10 bucks, you might be able to get 20 and 30 bucks every time. Again, because they're always going to see your items. They're always going to see your items because you, you ex your items are everywhere. I've got categories. like If you look up uniform buttons, I'm on every page. If you look up sold uniform buttons, I'm on every page. And again, that's because I've got, I got 6,000 buttons up or whatever it is, something like that. Uh, and we topped the next guy below us by about a thousand listings, at least last I checked. It, it, again, it's it's all built into there. I'm seen as a certain, or you're seen. Who, what if you've got a large number of items, you, you draw attention to yourself. Your stuff shows up on Google, on Chrome, on here and there. I mean, if if you're again using Hip to auto sync through eBay, or you're using Bonanza, whatever you're using. You've got dominating factor on eBay. You definitely have it on the other platforms. So you're getting a, a bigger chance and a bigger opportunity to sell the same things that other people may have right this second on eBay for less money than you're selling it because they see you first. They see you on every page. Once they might see, oh, well, that's something similar to what I'm looking for. You, this guy's got 2,000 or 15,000 of this item or this an item in this category. I check out his store. They, they won't even see the other guys. They're, they're gonna, you're going to have so much stuff that they want. Again, this is you can only be done with long tail. But, but once you get them locked in there, they're going to save your store. They're gonna, I've got 5,000 following my store. And I had 3,400 before I ever did YouTube. I got people that have been buying us for like buying from us for ten plus years, over and over and again. You you build up this so so they don't even they don't even go to another guy anymore, another gal anymore. They're going straight to my store because I got uh, they can get bulk, they can get a, a group discount. So again, my my I, I've got a base of people from having long tail items up. Great to get to flip them short tail. So to to get started. Um, like, like Biff was saying, uh, um, again, what was the name? Uh, yeah, it is Biff. Okay. I didn't want to be mixing up because I know your last uh, bofo, but, um, again, once they get in your store, they're not going to be looking at the other people. Once they realize you'll give them a good discount when they buy multiple items, they're saving on shipping. If they go and get the, the same item from somebody else and that person only has that one item that, that they want, but you've got five, they can deduct the cost of shipping and still save and get it from me for more money. Yeah, this is all perceived value. It's all worked into our plan. I, I, this has all been thought out. I didn't just go, hey, let's just try some screwball thing. I've thought it out. We've tested stuff. If it works, we keep going with it. And then we expand. We figure out new ways like end and sell similar or every two days now we run the sales. During peak holidays, we might do three-day sales because there is a little more opportunity and it'll put the sale. Again, it just depends on and where a holiday may fall in my every other day uh, running on these sales. End and sell similar as well is a huge push. 
when we do end in self similar. Uh, to, here's an honest figure. You know, if I had a Bible, I'd swear to you over a Bible. This is an honest figure. 30%, just a hair under 30% increase when we were dipping. Again, I wasn't in the office and we missed and we didn't get as much up. We were doing other things and, and on and on and on. Stuff happened and I had to be out and we didn't, I didn't do as many end in cell similars. And once I started it up again, it, it bounced the sales up almost 30% back up. So we're almost at a fourth quarter number right this second. Again, I did a volume. I, I, if you don't have volume, again, it may not work for you as well. You, you have to have the volume to do a lot of these. So that's a, 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 a big, major, major, major. It's, it's the biggest bonus you'll ever get off of reselling, in my opinion, is having volume up in niches. Again, I, I'm not the first one to think of this. It's not something that other, there's 100 other people doing the exact same thing I'm doing. But the, the volume up, it, it's a big draw. And it, not only is it a big draw, I get people contact me. Before I even even was on YouTube, people on eBay would say, hey, I see you got a lot of this. I got a huge bunch I'm close to you. Any interest in buying it from me? And I, I've done that too. So there's, there's a million different reasons why long tail with volume is the best. The more stuff you have up, the more stuff you can play around with. You can drop the prices later. You can keep building on it. You can, again, price higher. You, you are a dominating factor in why prices and certain things are a set price. With, with um, uniform buttons, I've pretty much set the, 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 the standard price and rate for a lot of them. A lot of other people are pricing now based on what I'm getting out of them. I'm, I'm, I used to go to button shows, so I'm pricing them at button prices, what button prices should be minus eBay, and that's, that's just my prerogative to do. And everybody else follows suit because I'm the dominating factor in there, so the prices steadily increase to a certain point, you know, up to, you know, a, a, a stated value on them. If you go by price guides and stuff and, you know, auction prices and specific niche auctions like a Civil War auction for buttons or something. There's, there's, there's a given price that a lot of number of these sell for. And as long as you know what those are, you can play around with the numbers for any category, whatever. You, if you know your shoe prices, you can play around with shoes or shirts or um, bowling, silk embroidered bowling shirts or bomber jackets from the Korean War with fancy dragons on the lining and the back. and uh, Whatever it is, there's a, there's a market value for everything. Christie's has one. Um, Heritage knows the average price that a certain autograph goes for, a certain comic book, a certain this, a certain that. Again, you, you follow and you keep in the footsteps of all these prices, you're going to do fairly well with them. That's, that's just the gist on it. So anyway, uh, so again, long tail best. Uh, hopefully I did answer your question, craft -o -matic. Well, thank you, Stephen. Appreciate that. Thank you, Philip. Philip, love, love. thank you very kindly. Uh, let's see here. Leisure letter. Do you send a sales newsletter when you run a sale? It automatically does it for you. You can set it up. Um, I don't remember if you can go back in and, and uh, used to be able to. You could type a note and all kinds of stuff. But now it just says it. They have to select that they want to get that. So if you're... Um, getting, we have people that follow us, right? So I've got 5,000 or so people that follow just my eBay store. Again, before YouTube, we only gained 16,000 or whatever. A lot of people, I don't post my, my store in any of my videos. I'm not trying to get you to buy my stuff. I, I want my data to be as close to numbers that are based on just, uh, eBay draw. I'm not trying to draw, use you to get boost or anything. Uh, most people who are watching my videos aren't going to buy the type of stuff I sell. So it would be ludicrous for me to try to market my store to everybody. I, I get the complaint. You don't have your store in there. I showed it just a few minutes ago. You can look it up if you want. I'm not. It's not hidden. I just, I'm not advertising to you, anybody out there watching this. I'm not trying to get your money, I guess is the point. The whole point of doing the videos is to show people how to do something. I was lucky enough to have somebody named Lou who showed me a heck of a lot. Without that that one guy in my life, I wouldn't be here doing this. I wouldn't have understood all kinds of stuff. And so anyway, I, I liked showing. I liked talking. I was a training manager. I showed other managers how to do run businesses when I worked for restaurants. When I was a regional manager, I helped train, express you know how the, this works, how to you know track your inventory, and oh, oh that's just what you do. So I'm I'm stuck in that pattern here anyway. Let me let me stop rambling and go on down here. 
Um, if it flips, it ships. If you're talking about my my sales and markdown sales, that's not my store sales. That has nothing to do with the volume of sales I'm having. That's only the sales I get from running the sales and markdown. If they didn't buy it at the full sales markdown price, let's say it's a $100 item, I discounted it 30 on that sale. If they bought it at $70, it's going to show up in that list and that list only. I, I allow counters. So the majority of items that are sold, if somebody's interested and they want to go by them sending an offer to me, is sold on a counter. The counter does not show up on that sales and markdown list. It doesn't show up. We do t at least 10 times the amount on, on, on um, uh, offers to watchers than I do on a sales and markdown. Again, I'm not trying to sell the item. I've said this in every video I discuss this. I've probably said this in 20 or 30 videos. The whole point of running the sales and markdown is not to sell them at that price. If they sell at the price, great, because it means I sold them for a little more than I expected to sell the items for. I sold them at that 2x mark versus a 3x mark. So, again, you, you, the, the sales and markdown amount sold means nothing to me. I'm pointing that out here ahead of time. I've pointed it out a dozen plus times. The point is to get the offers to watchers. So at again, I do a 30% off sale. I'll get an offer or I'll get a watcher. I, I get hundreds of them when I do this. Uh, the first day I did end and sell similar, we immediately, like an hour and 20 minutes later, had over 200 watchers where I could send offers to. And that was before my sales started rolling. So again, again, I sent I sent the those offers to watchers out before I ran the sale. I sent them out at twenty four percent off, and then I started the sale at thirty percent off. And some of them sold before the sale even started at that twenty four percent. So I, I I made six percent more, where I didn't have to give the discount. So, but again, the offers to watchers is where ninety percent of our items probably sell by offers to watchers. Ninety percent probably, or somewhere in that number. Some are just purchased at the full list price, probably a 5%, and then again, 90%, or probably 89, we'll say, and then we've got probably 2 or 3% sell at my uh, sales and markdown price. That's probably an average for anybody who's doing exactly the same basic process we're doing. Again, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying, I don't worry about the sales and markdown. I'm still getting 2x or 1.5x out of my, my, hey, this is how much I want out of the item. So even if I do counters, and again, I, I always allow counters, always, I, in, unless the, they've sent me an offer and it's like 50% off, I'll probably just decline it or send it at only a 20% discount. Or again, it depends on what, what, what the item was and if I've got a sale running now and all that crap. I, I will just decline offers that will come up to the 50% mark uh, most of the time. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, do your watchers receive a notification that you have started a sale? Um, it'll show up, I think, in there if they're watching it. If if it's like in their cart or something, I think it'll show. But here, here's another bad factor here. If people see it on sale and they want to get a bunch of items at the sale price and they say, well, let me add them to the cart and I'm going to close it out with the cart. If they go ahead and purchase the things in their cart, they're not getting the sale price on eBay. You can try it yourself. I've had this issue where I've had to cancel, relist, and give them a discount because they're like, well, what happened? The cart closes it out at whatever the actual price was. So they're not going to get discounts in many cases. So you got to be very careful with stuff like that. Like, like a counter offer. They have to accept the offer. They can't close out the cart to accept these counters. They're just going to get it at the actual discount list price or whatever. So with the, the counters and stuff, you've got to be very careful with stuff like that on the cart. Um, where are we at? I'm not even going to look at sales, regular stores, or online. Um, that's less than 20% of lives. I've already uh, about to purchase the item. Picking, uh, grinning. Yeah, I'm, uh, the 20%, the you, you have to start a sale off at a reasonable amount. One fifth is like a, such, or is a psychological mark, the 20% mark. 20% or above is like a national standard. Even if a, like a, a department store may raise the prices 10% so they can be able to afford to give you a 20% discount or 24% or whatever it falls into. But 20% is the bare bones baseline that I would usually do. Now, again, in season, if I'm, if I'm doing you know $10,000 a weekend, every, every other day I'm doing 10,000 combined on those two days, 
I'm probably not going to run a sale. Or if I want to boost that up to 15,000, whatever the case may be, I'm probably going to run only a 10 or 15%. It's the only time I would lower my sales below 20% is if my numbers are through the roof. Um, and again, most of the time I'll just turn off the sale and just won't run a sale for a few weeks and see what happens with, with my sales. In fourth quarter, most of the time I don't run a sale. I'll have a lot of watchers. There'll be more, you know, might be a 60, 70 percent increase in certain categories of people that would buy something in the winter versus not. If it's a, or a retiree or someone who goes down to, say, Florida for the for the winter or something like that, they may only purchase half the year. That's, again, why running a, an auction for some items, the, the, the folks that may collect certain items may be doing certain activities during you know the summer and then in the winter they may travel and hang out and relax there's a lot of people that buy from me and that's what they do or in in some cases i sell stuff to universities and colleges professors and things like that what i have found is they only buy while school's in if they're not teaching in the summer they're off for the summer especially a professor so i don't have purchases from them if i ran certain items on a seven-day auction two or three times they're not going to see it ever so if I run it as a bin and just let it sit there till you know whenever, they're gonna see it come season, and I don't have to worry about it, and I don't have to worry about well I'll remember my to myself I'll list this just before school starts. Why would I mess with it? Just list it and be done with it. At least that's my take on it. Um, da -da -da, let me pop down here. Um, Jeff Loftus, good evening, Jeff. How you doing? Good to see you in. Piece of scrap, welcome. Hopefully you're doing okay, Jeff. Mr. Lowe, same with you. And I got Marty, as I said. 100, 100 days. Those sales look like they were all $100, day, $100 days. Uh, those aren't, again, uh, those aren't sales. Those are only sales running through your um, the sales and markdown. And it has to be at the price. A counter doesn't count as a sales and markdown sale sale. I mean, that's, that's how it works. Um, hey, Michelle, how are you doing? Uh, Mighty Mike Faust, any thoughts on Facebook Marketplace? It's the Wild West. I don't do it. I won't mess with it. I don't even look on it to buy at all. Um, I gave up around here on Craigslist and Facebook for any reason whatsoever. I can't stand Facebook, the whole meta crap. I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't even post. I, I mean, I post links to some videos, but just like Instagram, I haven't posted a video on Instagram in I don't know how long. Um, and I know a lot of other YouTubers do, but I'd, I'd rather spend the time doing my business, I think, these days than worrying about Instagram and all these other sites and stuff like that. I'm not a social network person. I know technically it's a social network, but I'm just rambling about what I do and how I do it. I'm not, and I like talking about my business, uh, or at least this, this, this type of business, not necessarily mine, but the, the whole atmosphere of reselling in general. I've done it for my whole life, pretty much. Went to my first garage sale when I was like six or seven with my mom, so... Um, uh, the Stun Law one. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you back in too. Marketplace Boutique. Um, hit the like button. Yes, thank you. I'm terrible on that. If you haven't hit the like button, please slam that like button. We're going to end it here shortly. Um, for the love of money, 100% of my inventory comes from Marketplace in bulk. You can do that. It just depends on what it is. Your your profit margins usually aren't as good as you're buying them from a Marketplace. That's all I'm going to say. I, I'd, 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 have to, I'd be cutting my profit margins down almost in half if I had to source from mostly Marketplaces because they've already been in someone's hand. I usually get the majority of my stuff most of the time straight from a person. I'm not screwing around with any... Again, everybody, whatever works for you is, is great. I'm not trying to mock it, but for the most part, everybody that I know would say the same thing. Again, you may have something different, but for the most part, most items you'll do far better otherwise. So just FYI. Uh, hey, Purple Rain, how are you doing? Good evening, good evening. Uh, thank you, are you... Um, I just lost you... My feed bounces all over so often. Are you bizarre? Thank you. Does end and sell similar remove watchers? Yes, it does. And if so, is it still worth it? Yes, it is. Uh, who I don't even look at my watchers. The only watchers I ever look at are the ones that are watching an item that I can send an offer to. If, if I can't send an offer to them, who, who cares? I already know my prices. I research. If, I, if I'm doing end and sell similar, usually I'm going back and checking the prices too. You know, so I'm, I'm not worried. I don't I don't worry if they have watchers. If I can't send an offer to them, they haven't bought it. 
there's so many other resellers nowadays that watch my stuff. It's, it's invalid information as far as I'm concerned. Views I never look at. They mean nothing to me because, again, I, I'm selling so much. I always, there's never been a day where I haven't sold a decent amount of stuff in years. Years. I, again, I don't, I don't, I don't worry about that because it doesn't mean anything. I, I never worry or sweat it if I've got a bunch of uh, or watchers. If stuff's been up for a long time when I'm scanning through or something, a different story. Now, I can still pull up items by how long they've been on the site, even if I'm ending and selling similar. Now, how can you do that? I've got bin locations in almost every one of my listings. Those bin locations are tied to list dates on my documents and my folders and stuff. So I can always tell when something was listed. And if I want to pull those items up, I just type in the bin number. And usually every bin has 30 or 40 items in it. I can just adjust those 30 or 40 items. So if I want to adjust prices, I've got other ways to tell how long things were up on eBay as opposed to using eBay. Once you end and sell similar, you, you lose the initial list date. So you'll never know how long something's been on the site when you start to do that. That was a big plus in the, in the past for a lot of people. But again, I, I've got the information somewhere else. I just leave the screen open these days, so I don't have to constantly be opening up and worrying about that. I never worry about watchers. Again, I, as I said, offers to watchers. If I can send an offer to them, I will do that before the sale starts. Or end in sell similar, I should say. I'll, I'll usually send some out right off the bat um, if the sales are, are beginning to end. So by the time I get up to end and sell some of the, the offers to watchers have been out a little while. If I'm running, I'm going to start a sale, I always send the offers to watchers out first, too. Um, where are we at again? Um. Where are we? I know, yeah, it is quiet. Again, school's back, college is back in. There's per, I know probably half a dozen people who aren't home tonight, and they're actually traveling. They're, they can get into the dorm this weekend. School starts next week. So this is the weekend that this campus here is just the parking lots are packed with kids moving in to the dorm right now. That's what's going on. Um, uh hopefully again that's helpful i know a lot of people are kind of surprised on some of the cuban stuff yeah you got to watch out for cuba iran and north korea those are the three big ones you never mention any of those names in any payment processor either they will get you locked so it's the only time i've been locked by paypal in the last probably 20 years other than when someone hijacked one of our our card numbers and, and i had to have it locked but yeah you can't sell ivory Especially over state lines. No, you can. Put, I have ivory here. I've got a mil, military items that are ivory. I can own them, and in some cases, if you can prove that they're over a certain uh, a date, um, you can sell them. But you'd have to get some kind of uh, certified letter and stuff. And there are some some exemptions to to some ivory. But on eBay, you can't sell it. Don't list. You can't even list a blue jay feather on on eBay or Amazon any site. Blue jays are endangered species. Any animal-related item, I would always check with the Endangered Species Act first. If it's on that, it's banned on all platforms automatically. And in some cases, feathers in general are banned. If you list bovine, um, anything bovine, uh, like bovine bone of any kind, whether it's dyed like uh, chess pieces. There are some bovine uh, chess pieces out on eBay right now. If you don't put their, that they're bovine, your listing will probably get flagged and pulled. You can, and they'll send you a warning. If you do it a bunch, you have to list the type of bone it is. If you don't know, don't sell it. If you don't know how to tell ivory from bone or from uh, faux ivory, don't don't list it. Like cue balls, the old original cue balls are made out of ivory. Just be very cautious. Know your stuff. I've got an ivory one here. I've got a couple. What what as long as you can have you know the proper documentation in most cases you can again there's very very limited market but there is some opportunity if somebody's going to repurpose there's some artists who deal in like mammoth bone and things like that you can sell like like mammoth tusk that have come up from the tundra but you got to have all the documentation it's it's a process you can you can buy it on eBay if you didn't know that look up mammoth uh tusk and stuff usually it's it's again i haven't looked in a while so maybe the, the rules change but last year and before for uh, the entire time you could have bought so i bought mammoth mammoth ivory on ebay before myself 
for some art projects. I, I do buttons occasionally, and I did a, 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 a mammoth ivory clothing button for somebody. I carved a design in it. But anyway. Um, yeah, I wouldn't put any other term in there because somebody could always just turn you in. The, the item has to be here, here's the here's the law. The item has to have been made and you have to be it has to be provable. It has to have been made prior to the embargo. It, there's there's a stuff that was here before then. It's technically legal, but most sites won't let you sell it though. Um, anything I run into Cuba, I just I've got a box. I mean I probably got four hundred Cuban item, items here. Coins. I figure at some point, as soon as the embargo's done, that stuff's gonna be worth some money. So I've just hang on to it. I'm not I've had i I've had a box for like ten or fifteen years of just Cuba stuff. You know, there are some things that you can get away with if it was like um, uh, luggage labels, for an example. If it's like a Pan Am luggage label, it was printed here in this country. You know, there was it was if it's early enough, you know, it comes from like 20s or 30s. There, you're not going to get in legal trouble. Uh, let's just put it that way. There's there's two risks with selling ivory or any of that stuff. The one risk, obviously, is the legality wise of it, the, the fact that you can get in trouble legally speaking and fined or jail time for selling stuff like that. They, they've had an ivory bust last year or the year before where they netted some art dealers. You know, I think that some of the art dealers are doing it intentionally knowing what they're doing, but, you know, that's not my area there, but. I don't use the color, I don't usually type the word ivory in anything unless it's part of the name of whatever the item is. Um, eBay, you, like if I put in um, um, the term Indian, you're going to get flagged usually. Um, Arrowhead, you might even get flagged sometimes on. Stuff like that. Anything that's racial either, you will get a notice warning. If I'm, I'm trying to send something in my, my um, shipping is media and I'm not in the media category, like sheet music. Even though some, I list sheet music in other categories, I know that I'm going to get that warning. I still do it because as long as it's a piece of sheet music, I'm technically legally allowed to list it or sell it and ship it via media. Now, eBay bans you from sh shipping some items in certain categories, even though it's legally allowed. I just ship it through through uh, sh uh, Pirate Shipper or PayPal and then just drop the tracking number on eBay that same day so and that way it, it can still go media if ebay blocks me so i don't worry anymore these days i don't care what ebay says about the category you'll sell items better in many cases like if i had a sheet music of superman from 1940 superman march or some screwy like that it's it's going to go in the superman comic book section it's not going to go in sheet music you'll you'll far outweigh a sale in comic books than you ever would in in there if somebody's looking up vintage superman items they're not going to do a all category search and that would be the almost the only way they would ever see that item so if you only list the superman sheet music in in you know the sheet music section there there's a lot of people that would buy it only because superman's on it and that goes for hundreds of different items i'm just using superman as an example so like military items i don't i'm not going to list certain sheet musics in the sheet music section if it's civil war it's going in the civil war section because there'll be more people interested. There's in some categories, like if I typed in Superman and I'm trying to find something, there's a, a hundred thousand or more probably on eBay in just a comic book section. No one in their right mind is going to be looking through every category. They're going to go to collectibles at the at the bare bones minimum, which means they eliminate the your listing in the she music section. And that goes for a lot of ones. If if it's a huge category. You have to be more specialized. You can't list it in certain categories. The, the sh Superman sheet music isn't going to be bought probably from somebody just who wants sheet music. It's going to be bought from a Superman collector. And, and most spe uh, specifically, a Superman collector is going to be the one that's going to shell out the money to get a rare item that has Superman on it. Again, this is just an example. Who, it, who cares what, what's on it or what it's about? This is just a general example. You can extrapolate this out for any type of item, basically, that's in a niche. So just that's just another thought to, to keep in mind. I'm going to have to end this here because I've got to get some boxes ready for um, picking up uh, some, some haul items tomorrow. But um, I'll bring in a camera if, if they'll allow me to record. At least a couple of the places probably will. So in the next couple of weeks, you may see a haul video. It usually takes me a few weeks with haul clips to do anything with them. Usually they sit on the GoPro for a week or two before I even touch them again. But I'll be on the road tomorrow for probably a combined, I think I figured almost six hours, I think is the, the drive time. 
you know, round trip to, we're, we're going up to, I'll be in Detroit proper to look at some 45s and I'm looking at some 78s and I'm looking at some paper as well and then I've got a meeting tomorrow. So anyway, um, we're going to let it go at that here. I know I didn't get through most of the chat, unfortunately. Hopefully we covered a lot of good topics for you. Um, there's a lot of value in, in running sales and marked. And again, the biggest factor for sales and markdown, I'm just going to give you some, some uh, summary real quick, is the ability to send offers to watchers. Don't price your items at what everybody, at what they sell at. If something sells at 10 bucks, price it higher than 10 bucks so you can play around with it. Don't, don't price, if there's only three or four or something that's sold and there's no active at all of whatever you got, don't price it what the other people price it at if it's cheap. Price it higher, double it maybe. Everything you can't do that to. You're going to have to learn that. I wouldn't go and price Fisherman's Wharf postcards from San Francisco, you know, two or three times what everybody else sells them for because they won't sell because they made tens of millions of them and no one wants them. There's no collector buying that, that stuff. New York City cards don't sell for very much. San Francisco earthquake cards don't sell for that much. And everybody thinks, oh, well, I got an earthquake card, shows damage. They mass produce those. I've had hundreds of them. I usually sell them maybe, if you're lucky, four or five bucks, just for an example. Don't, don't fall for a lot of that stuff. But we're going to let it go at that. You got um, um, discontinued products in this video, too. If you missed that, go back and watch it. We show you how to run sales and markdowns in this video. And I talk about perceived value. Again, I, I tried to answer probably a hundred different questions from people that we received in the last 30 days tonight. And I, hopefully I addressed a lot of those for those folks that have, have multiple times posted that same question on, on my comments under videos. I, there's no way on earth I can respond to comments either on videos. I get hundreds of them. Uh, some videos, there might be a hundred just on one video. Uh, there's no way on earth I could spend the time. My business is where all my time goes to, so... Sorry, but there's no way on earth I could do it. I know people get mad. I get hate for that, but I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a reseller first and foremost. So anyway, I appreciate everybody coming on. I hope you had a good day. Hopefully things are going in your direction. We're going to end it off at that. If you didn't hit the thumbs up, please hit the thumbs up. Show some love for the channel.